goods afternoon or morning, depending on where you're opening this slide. Today, we will be talking about another topic, which is antiviral drugs. Last time, we talked about antifungal drugs. And today, we will be looking at antiviral drugs. So, follow me. Antiviral drugs, they are drugs specifically to treat viral infection. By the name, antiviral drugs, they are meant for viral infection. Now, they are a class of antimicrobial agents used specifically for treatment of viral infection, like I said. They only act on virus. They do not have effect on any bacteria. This class is going to be very fast. So I want you to adjust with my speed. We have narrow spectrum and broad spectrum antiviral drugs. Narrow spectrum antiviral drugs, they have drugs that have a narrow spectrum of activity, just like we have narrow spectrum of bacterial drug. They have limited number of virus they act upon. And broad spectrum antiviral drugs, they have also a broader perspective, I mean, broader virus. You can act against many types of viruses. The mechanism of action are based on the nature of virus. Mechanism of antiviral drugs are based on the nature of the virus. That is, they can only act against a developmental stage of the virus rather than destroying the virus. Virus cannot be destroyed, but they can inhibit some important aspect of the viral development, thereby leading to inhibition of the viral growth. Is that okay? So these mechanisms are based on the nature of the virus rather than destroying the virus. So in this case, this is different from the way antifungal and antibiotics act. We have two different things now. One is looking at the developmental stages of virus, because if you remember the rate at which virus develop, we have stages, we have the penetration, we have now when after penetration, the virus begin to you know, release its enzymes and we have uh, assembly. Now we have, you know, arrangement. We have stages of viral development in the body. So at this stage, at a particular instance, the drug target the most important aspect that can lead to inhibition or stop the development. Now the virus is not killed. The virus is stopped from progressing. Production of drugs for the treatment and prevention of viral infection, clinically for a long time, are very few compared with the number of antibacterial and antifungal. Why? Because we have more of bacterial infection than viral infection. And we have lesser fungal infection to bacteria. So we have the limited viral infection. Even though we are in the era of viral infection now, COVID-19, SARS infection, Ebola, Lassa, these are viral infection of note, but they are still not compared to the huge number of bacterial infection encountered in the hospital day in, day out. So attention has been drawn towards drugs for treatment of bacterial and fungi. Another reason is it was difficult to find compounds that interfere specifically with viral activity without causing significant harm to the host cell. Most 
most viral infections are incorporated into the host cell. Now, if a compound is to be developed for the treatment of viral infection, the compound supposed to have a selective activity against the virus. Now, such compounds are difficult to find. Most compounds find it difficult not to interfere. So this becomes difficult. There are so many antiviral compounds, so many that can kill the virus, that can inhibit the virus, but interference with the old cell is the issue. Another reason why antiviral drugs are limited is that many medically important virus, such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C virus, papilloma virus, cannot be propagated conveniently in the laboratory. So in order for a drug to be developed, the virus must be properly studied. There is insufficient information on many viruses. Currently, the problem with COVID is as a result of insufficient information that has led to vaccine, or vaccine because the information on virus such as COVID is not readily available and such becomes difficult to treat because no information on that, excuse me. Types of antiviral drugs are neutrocyte analogs. Neutrocyte analogs are drugs that possess structurally similarly compounds to viral compounds. The viral neutrocyte and the drug neutrocyte, I mean, the drug compound. Are similar. I mean, this drug they possess similar structure to viral neutrocyte. And so they act by interfering. They act by interfering with the synthesis of viral nucleic acid. Remember treatment of viral infection or the way antiviral act is by disturbing developmental stages rather than killing. So these nucleoside analogs, they are like double. They mimic, they mimic a viral nucleoside. They mimic important viral nucleic acid. Example is guanosine and to deoxytamidine, the act by interfering with the synthesis of virus nucleic acid. They insert themselves, the act by competitive binding. The five triphos triphosphate derivative of the nucleoside analog is the active form of the drug, and it acts as a competitive inhibitor of a virus polymerase, such as reverse transcriptase. What this drug does is that they compete with the virus nucleoside. And when they do that, in terms of polymerization, instead of the virus nucleoside to bind, the drug binds. And when the drug binds, the drug permits further binding and that terminates the action. That's this example. The doing nucleic acid, doing nucleic acid synthesis, even of this nucleotide analog is incorporated into a growing strand, the nucleic acid is terminated. An example of a nucleoside analog drug is the Bavirin. Bavirin is an analog of guanosine. It is used for treatment of infection with several RNA virus, especially persistent 
infection with hepatitis C virus. We also have non-nucleoside drugs. These are antiviral drugs that are not incorporated into any viral DNA. They inhibit directly by binding non-competitively to the vast transcriptase enzyme that control the replication of the genetic material of a virus, such as HIV. They do not bind competitively. They inhibit by non-competitive binding to reverse transcriptive enzymes. So they don't compete now. They are not nucleoside analog. They look for a specific target and bind. So the vast competition is one of the most popular targets in the field of antiretroviral drug development. Example is below, nivirapine, nevirapine, and delavidine. We also have these as an examples. No nucleoside reverse transmitted inhibitors. These are examples. So we have protease inhibitors. Viral enzymes that are essential for the production of infectious agents represent potential therapeutic agents. Viral, viral protease is an absolute requirement in the life cycle of many viruses. Now, protease is an example of an absolute enzyme that is required for development of a virus. Now, some drugs act as inhibitors of this protease. A protease inhibitors prevent viral replication by selectively binding to the viral proteases. Example is HIV-1 protease. The activity is targeting protease. Protease is requirement for life cycle of many virus, not all virus, but some viruses. And once this is done, it terminates the activity of the virus and the person is relieved. We also have interference. Interference are proteins that belong to the class of glycoprotein, known as cytokines, that possess antiviral activity. They are actually natural. They are released by the host cell in response to the presence of pathogens, such as virus, bacteria, parasites. So interferons are not restricted to only virus, but they act against virus. They are usually named for their ability to interfere with viral application and they protect cells from viral infection. So interferons are natural. They are naturally produced in the cell. They are proteins. That is why it's very good to consume more protein in your diet than carbohydrate because it increases the number of interferons. And they are of the class of glycoproteins. So they help to fight against germs, generally. They fight against bacteria, fungi, virus, um, what have you. In the more interferons are in the system, the more uh, immune you are. And their activity is always to augment the, the antibodies. And sometimes if you are on medication, they also assist uh, in boosting the immunity. So and interferons are not drugs that you can find elsewhere or purchase or manufacture. They are naturally released in the host cell. Their functions, like I said, they activate immune cells. They have to activate the immune cells, such as the natural killer cells and the macrophages. They augment it, and they also increase the host defense by upregulating antigen. They help the antigen to be presentable they make the presentation of the antigen available for macrophages. Some antigen can actually hide, but they have to expose it. So um, they make uh, the 
the histocompatibility of antigen increase such that it can be easily, you know, be destroyed by the macrophage. When the macrophage binds to antigen, it leads to complex which normally destroy the antigens. We have type one interferons, which is known as the leukocyte. We have the type two, we, uh, we have the fib uh, fibroblast. We have the uh, IFN omega, no, this is not omega. Then we have the type two IFN, also known as the IFN, IFN gamma. And uh, we have the major ones that are available for treatment, I mean, for attack of foreign organism in the body. Their action, like I said, is against any foreign substances, bacteria, virus, fungi, or some any other antigen that are not part of the system. So interferons are not drugs. They are host response. The next class, we will be looking at another topic. And I will take your questions afterwards. If you have any question, you can jot it down. Next time we are having a class, we are going to do a recap. And we are going to rush up. Thank you.